Ah, the city of London. It's home of the UK's largest metropolis and cultural centre. London is also among the oldest of the world's greatest cities, with its history spanning nearly two millennia. London's architecture ranges from the Romanesque central keep of the Tower of London, the great Gothic church of Westminster Abbey, Christopher Wren's Baroque masterpiece, St Paul's Cathedral, the high Victorian Gothic of the Palace of Westminster, the industrial art deco of Battersea Power Station, the post-war modernism of the Barbican Estate, and of course, the iconic skyscraper, 30 St Mary Axe, the Gherkin. Which, as it happens, is the building we're discussing today. The beginning of the Gherkin started in 1992 when an explosion rocked the financial district of London. The provisional IRA set off explosives near the Baltic Centre, which caused catastrophic injury to the building. Later on, city officials decided to tear down that building and replace it with a tower we now call the Gherkin. The Gherkin, originally meant to be a much taller building, was named the Millennium Tower, a name that sadly failed to materialise. Now, I could go on and do all these boring stories and talk to the camera all day, but to be honest, let's get down to the good stuff. The facts. Since its completion, the building has won a number of awards for architecture, including the Stirling Prize, the London Region Award, and the Empress Skyscraper Award. The Gherkin is over three times the height of Niagara Falls. What a feat! Despite its curved shape, the building only actually uses one piece of curved glass, which is the lens right at the top. The Gherkin uses energy saving methods, which allows the tower to use half the power that a similar building would use. And yes, we're looking at you Strata SE1. There are 1,037 steps in the Gherkin, so I just hope when I get there, we've got one of these. Its high-powered lifts are capable of transporting up to 378 people at a time, at a speed of six meters per second. 378 people per time? Does that sound right? That sounds like a typo. No, 378 people at a time. That doesn't sound right. Hi there, you're right. I have a very random question to quickly ask you. Is it true that 378 people can fit in the lift? No. I read it online. No, Jesus. Oh, Maybe not, in all of them. And all of them combined? Possibly. That makes one. much right. more sense. Six. Okay, I thought that. I couldn't quite believe it, but that's all I wanted. Thank you so much. Over 35 kilometres of steel was used to construct the Gherkin, and 20 years later, we're steel impressed. The body of a Roman woman was found in the construction of the Gherkin. That body was then transferred to the Museum of London, and then brought back and reburied when the construction had finished. The 16th floor of the Gherkin is the largest floor, 
It's 1,816 square meters. In April 2005, a window popped out of the building and fell 28 stories to the ground. This led to questions about the sustainable credentials of the building. I can't eat any more gherkins. I'm going to throw up. Now that the factual stuff's done, let's hear what the members of the public have to say about the tower. Do you know what this building's called? Uh, no. <laughs> is, is it the Shard? I'm not familiar, no. no. Absolutely not. Uh, it's gherkin, isn't it? The gherkin. When you look at it, what are three words that come to mind? Three words. Pickle? Yeah, a pickle. Yes. Uh, a penis? A bullet? Yeah. Modern, interesting, and uh, unique. Uh, McDonald's? Gherkin. Modern? Egg. A church, a church tower. Like um, the stained glass. A cucumber. Yeah. And a cucumber. Boris Johnson? Um, a butt plug, to be honest. It's sexual. <laughs> <laughs> Finance, uh, maybe La Défense in France, Paris. Uh, skyscraper. Well, I guess that's us done for the day. We've made some friends, had some laughs, and learned a hell of a lot about the gherkin. For all those watchers that want a little bit more information, once again, here it is. I've been your host, Harry Venables, your cameraman, Cass Strange, and our journalist, Joe Levy. Come back soon. <laughs>